Hi everybody, this is Dennis Monacrucis once again, and I uh, got a little bonus coverage here that really I think supplements pretty nicely what we looked at last time. So, um, and when I say last time, I mean in the uh, the regular the regular show. So um, I would have if I had gotten this position a day earlier, then I would have included it with the with the Sirwan game. So this is just uh, a really kind of remarkable example of of some good luck here for us. So this um, is from the European Individual Women's Championship that's going on right now. And uh, the game is played between Inna Gapanenko, who's a very strong player, uh, pretty close to 2,500. She had white here. And her opponent, Oksana Gritsieva, who's uh, 2,200 and change. So white's the stronger player, and she has the slightly better position here. Or I shouldn't say slightly. I should say somewhat better position here, thanks to the outside passed pawn, and also thanks to uh, a kind of a good knight versus so-so bishop um, scenario here. All right, well, before we discuss this, let me suggest that you re stop the recording and try to figure out what white to move ought to do here, or maybe what white to move ought not to do. So have at it, and um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, apply what you what you learned from the uh, cruise Sirawan game. Okay, well, it's not clear what White's best is, but what White's not best move uh, is is the move that Gapanenko in fact shows, and that's Knight C5. Now, this is a great move against most of Black's replies. The E6 pawn is under attack, and pushing it would just hang the F pawn. Okay, so that's no solution. If F takes G4, then let's say H takes G4, and now E5 will lose among other ways to this, 96 check. Okay, if the king retreats, then we take, take, king c4, and here we see the outside pass pawn working its magic. So king c7, king d4, king c6, king e5, and white is going to win here. Actually, yeah, white wins by a tempo. So very important. Um, okay. And after knight e6, if black tries to be kind of counter attacky with king to d6, then he loses like this, knight e4, ed. And now, not king c4, because this would just be a, a draw, but instead king to b6. And white wins with a little tactic. It's a pretty common tactical trick. Another one that you should know about. Okay, if instead of um, d2, black plays king to d7, that doesn't help because after king b7, D2, white queens with check. So that's going to be simple. But after D2, white queens can't make a rook here. So I, I know I gave a couple of uh, facetious under promotions in the uh, Sirawan, or the Cruz Sirawan game. But here, C8 rook would be a big, big blunder on account of King D7. And the rook can't get back to the first rank and um, can't get behind the king either. So this is just, um, I think, winning for, for black. Rook c7, king d8. Okay, so c8, of course, is the normal move and the right move and, and wins because after both sides queen, white has a skewer and wins the game. Okay, so after knight c5, e5 is no good. F takes g4 is no good. And king to d6 is also no good because after king to d6, white plays c7, threatening to promote. King c7, knight e6 check, and white wins the bishop. And also black's king isn't going to be able to come in and rescue the day. So for example, king d6, knight d4, say fg, hg, king e5, knight e2. And between the pawn and the knight, there's a very nice barrier here along the fourth rank, keeping black's king out. And if he tries now to go around and exchange off all the pawns, well, that's going to be too slow as well. So king f6, king c4, king g6, and now we just play knight to g3, put an end to that. So white's winning on all of these other moves. Well, that leaves bishop takes c5, but this, of course, seems to be wrong, because after king c5, well, once again, white has the outside passed pawn. Won't this just win the game? Well, it will if black doesn't play the right move here, but if black does, in fact, white's losing. So the right move here is simply f4. Now white has no pawn moves. Well, h4, but it's, it's bad. And only one king move um, saves the, c, the c6 pawn. So 
White has a choice between that, and also we can take a quick look at king to d4. So the main the main idea, though, so let's look at this first. King b5. So once again, as in the Sir one game, we drive the king as far away over as possible first, and then we make our breakthrough. So e5, king c5, e4, and white wins. So he can avoid uh, allowing black to promote right away with king to d4, but after either e3 or e takes f3, He's going to end up um, ahead of material and with a winning position. So no no real, really big challenges here. Um, okay, can just play f2. It doesn't really matter. All right, at some point, I guess we can do this. Yeah. And, and this wins, of course. Okay, but lots of ways to win once you've created that extra passed pawn. So king c5 f4 and king b5 is hopeless if white tries to uh to kind of run up the middle here we looked at some lines like this in the in the sirwan game it's going to come up short too so king c6 king e5 king d7 and if white goes backwards then again we'll see a motif similar to the sirwan game so let's say king e4 king d6 here 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 and then e4 comes next and even if it were black to move here he would still play e4 check f takes e4 check, and then king to e5, regaining the pawn with an easy win. Okay, so king d4, king c6, king e5, king d7. So that's if what happens if white retreats. If he comes up, trying to counterattack, that's no good either, king d6. And now we just push the e pawn. So king f5, king d5, and then e4. And on king h6, of course, e4 straight away is, is winning. Okay, it doesn't matter what white does, but um, white black is going to promote well ahead of schedule. Okay, so knight c5 was really a big blunder for that reason. So after bishop takes c5, Gapanenko tried something a little bit more interesting. G takes f5. Okay, well now if e takes f5 back, then the position is just a draw. King c5, h5, king d5, and all the pawns are going to get swapped off here. Uh, note that h4 is bad. Because with king to e4, white's in the square. Um, actually, maybe maybe black can even draw this, but I'm, I'm not positive and certainly don't think that black should should bother trying to find out, though it doesn't take too long to figure it out. Yeah, no, no. Okay, he's too slow that way. It doesn't get to the trebu trebuchet position. And if, um, okay, so if we run back here, here. Okay, so we draw. All right, so the passive defense draws. But, uh, again, no reason for black to go that route. Okay, but anyway, all of these positions are draws. All right. However, after white's g takes f5, black should not recapture the pawn, but save his bishop. So bishop to e7. Sorry, not his bishop, her bishop. It's a women's championship. So bishop e7, f e6. And now Grutzieva makes a simple waiting move here with bishop to d6. And now white's going to start losing some material. But white has one last try. And what Gapanenko realizes, correctly so, is that if she can get to a position where she loses every single one of her pawns, but can simply get rid of black's g pawn and return her king to h1, then it's a draw. It's going to be bishop and wrong color rook pawn. So her idea here was to play f4. And what she hoped is, okay, well, first of all, black can't play bishop takes f4 because then e7, and white even wins. And, um, okay, so g takes f4 happened, and so now her idea is, okay, king c4, and she's hoping that she can get some position where king's on e4, and then she can play e f e7 and maybe overload black's bishop, but it's, it's too slow. So king c6, king d4, king c7. And white resigned because after after king c7, oops, king e4, king d8, black's king is in time to deal with the e pawn. So the f4 pawn is going to remain on the board, and the uh, wrong color rook pawn issue just won't arise. All right, so a nifty little trick here. I mean, I don't think it was really intended as a trap, but it's uh, it functioned like one. And Gapanenko, a very good player, fell headlong into it. So it shows the, the power of prejudice there in, in terms of um, these rules of thumb. 
an outside pass pawn is very often a huge advantage, especially in a king and pawn ending, but it's it's no guarantee. So even with even material, black not having any passed pawns at all, white having more space, despite all of these advantages, uh, this position after bishop c5, king c5, is simply lost for white. So it's a useful lesson, and um, again, both a specific lesson to be wary of these, these tricks when you've got the outside passed pawn that bad things can still happen to you, and also as a, a salutary reminder that rules of thumb are just that. They're not laws. They're, they're general ideas that are often very useful but aren't guarantees. Okay, so thank you. Hope you enjoyed it, and um, hope you enjoyed this little uh, bonus coverage too, and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.